In this video, I'll share with you what is tested in the O-level physics topic, static electricity. So let's get started. Before I go on to talk about what's tested in the topic on static electricity, I want to share with you some of the resources that I've created recently. One of it is on the compilation of all the O-level physics formula that are tested in the O-level physics exam, as well as the list of O-level physics definitions. So do check out our website at emilylearning.com to find out more. Okay, so now back to our topic on static electricity. The best way to find out what is tested is by looking at the syllabus. So here we are at the syllabus for static electricity. So let's go through line by line what is tested. So in part A, you are asked um, to state that there are both positive and negative charge, and charge is measured in coulombs. Okay, so you have positive charge and negative charge, and charge is measured in coulombs. So the SI units for charge is coulomb. Okay, and in physics, okay, we usually denote uh, Q as charge. Okay, and charge is measured in coulombs, and the uh, symbol for coulomb is capital C. So, for example, um, if you have uh, 3.6 times 10 to the power of 19 coulomb, so this would be its charge. So, this is how you write it. Okay, later on in the chapter on electricity, you will learn that there is a formula relating charge. One of it is Q equals to IT, which is charge is equals to current in ampere times time in seconds. Okay, and you also have another formula which is V equals to um, W over Q. So this is potential difference in volts. W is work done or energy in joules, and Q is charge in coulombs. Right. Next, in part B, you need to be able to state that light charges attract and sorry, unlike charges attract and light charges repel. So uh, usually for part B, um, you won't be asked to write this, but rather to apply it. So they give you a scenario and they ask you, why is it that the charge move away from each other? Then your answer would be unlike, sorry, light charges repel. If you have another question and they say that, oh, these two charge move towards each other, why is it so? Then your answer would be unlike charges attract. All right. B, uh, in part C, you will be asked to describe an electric field as a region in which an electric charge experiences a force. So this is a definition that you will need to memorize. So in my uh, website, emilylearning.com slash blog, I do have an article where I go through all the terms that you will need to be able to define. Okay, and electric field is one of them. So I'll provide a link in the description below to check it out if you're interested to find a list of all the terms and definitions that you need to memorize for your O-level physics exam. Okay, so now once we are done with this definition of electric field, next let's look at uh, part D. So in part D, you will need to be able to draw the electric field of an isolated point charge and recall that the direction of the field lines give the direction of the force acting on a positive test charge. So basically what it tells you is that you need to be able to draw the electric field lines. Okay, and you will uh, and when you are drawing the field lines, you always need to draw arrows. And how does the arrow point? It always points away from the positive charge and towards the negative charge because the positive charge will be attracted to the negative charge. Okay. So basically, uh, there's a lot of words here, but what I want you to remember is that whenever you draw the electric field lines, the arrows always point away from positive charges and towards negative charge. Okay, and you also need to, uh, so you need to be able to draw the electric field pattern between two isolated point charges. So let me show you what you need to draw. So you'll be asked to draw the electric field line. So you need to be able to draw the field lines between two charged particles. Okay, uh, so this is plus and minus. So positive and negative charge, so they attract each other. So this is how the field lines look like. So when they repel each other, this is how the field lines look like. And if you have a single charge, this is how it looks like. Okay, if you have um, two plates, 
then this is how it will look like all right so uh this is a screenshot of my udemy course uh, i'll provide a link uh, to the description below so in this course you will find uh, a step by step or uh, um, all the concepts tested in o level physics on electricity practical electricity practical electricity and static electricity okay not only do i go through the concepts i also go through in detail some common questions and how do you apply them or how do you answer them now that we have talked about drawing of electric field patterns, next let's talk about the other points in the syllabus. Okay, so now we are at, uh, so let's take a look at show understanding that electrostatic charging by rubbing involves a transfer of electrons. So for example, when you rub two objects together, okay, so uh, one may become negatively charged and the other one may become positively charged. So for example, if I have a cloth, all right, so I have a cloth, cloth, and I have a rod. So if I were to use the cloth to rub on the rod, and eventually the cloth becomes positively charged and the rod becomes negatively charged, okay, this is because, so let's, before I go on, maybe I should first say that the cloth is initially neutral and the rod, a plastic rod for instance, is also initially neutral. So why is it that now the cloth is positively charged and the rod is negatively charged? Well, this is because when you rub the cloth with the rod, the cloth loses electrons while the rod gains electrons. Okay, so the one that loses electrons be ha will have more positive charge than negative charge. So as such, it is positively charged. On the other hand, the item that becomes negatively charged has gained electrons. So now it has more electrons than positive charges. So therefore, it becomes negatively charged. So take note, right, in electrostatics, things become positively or negatively charged because of electrons. Either it loses electrons to become positively charged or a neutral item gains electrons and becomes negatively charged. Remember, it is always the electrons or the negative charge that moves, not the positive charges. All right. Okay, so basically this is what it means. Show the understanding that electrostatic charging by rubbing involves a transfer of electrons. So something becomes negatively charged because it gains electrons. Something becomes positively charged because it loses electrons. Next, you have described experiments to show electrostatic charging by induction. So um, now, Whenever we are talking about electrostatic um, charging by induction, it always involves metals, okay? Because in metals, the electrons are free to move about within that metal, okay? So therefore, you can have induction. For non-metals or non-conductors, okay, the uh, electrons are not free to move about. So in order to become charged, right, you need to uh, rub them or it might be by friction they get charged by friction all right so now coming back to this so describe experiments to show electrostatic charging by induction more often the question involves giving you a scenario and you explaining what happens okay or describing what happens okay so uh, you will need to be able um, to do this so let me give you an example Okay, the very common um, example. Okay. okay, so let me show you a common example. So a common example usually involves maybe a positively charged rod. Okay, and I have, uh, this is made of metal. Okay, both of these are made of metal. Okay, at the bottom, they have an insulating or a plastic holder. So these are made of plastic. Okay, so when a positively charged rod is placed close to this uh, metal, what happens is um, 
electrostatic induction takes place. The side of the matter closer to this positively charged rod would have negative charge and here you have positive charge being induced here. So these two metal pieces, they are in contact with each other. So when they are in contact with each other, think of it as they are just one piece of metal. They're just like one piece of metal and the electrons are free to move about within these two pieces of metal. Okay, so when I place this positively charged rod here, the electrons inside the metal will get attracted towards this positively charged rod. Okay. So all the so the electrons will be attracted towards here. So you have more electron. So you have electrons being drifted towards this side. Cool. So when some of the electrons drift away, there will be this portion where there will be more protons than electrons. So it becomes positively charged. While at this point, because the electrons drift over here, it will become negatively charged because there are more electrons. Okay. Now. On the same scenario, next what I'm going to do is I am going to move these two uh, metal plates away from each other while this rod is still here. So while this rod is still here, there will still be this uh, portion where there's an induced negative charge and this portion where there's an induced, uh, sorry, an induced negative charge here and an induced positive charge here. So now with this rod here, I am going to move these two plates apart. Okay, and what happens is now I will have a negatively charged. So this plate, these two plates, this will be negatively charged and this will be positively charged. Okay, even if I take away the rod. This will remain negative charge and this will remain positively charged. The okay, reason is because they are separated by air now. They are no longer in contact. So the electrons cannot move freely between the two pieces of metal. So the excess electrons on this metal plate will still remain here. This metal plate which lack um, electrons or has an excess of positive charge will remain positively charged. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to remove this. I'm going to remove this positively charged plate here, all right? What I'm going to do now is to place a grounding wire. So a grounding wire is something that has a very low resistance, all right? So what happens is, okay, because it is negative, so you look at it as we, when we earth something or when we uh, connect a piece of wire to the ground, what happens is it will bring away, or the ground we can see as, or the earth we can see as having an excess of different charges. So it's willing to accept both positive and negative charges, okay? So what happens is this negative charge here will drift or would flow out, okay? to the ground and it will become neutral okay because now the negative charge the excess negative charge has been removed once all the negative charge all the excess negative charge has uh, moved to earth okay then it will become neutral and the electrons will stop flowing so now you have a neutral metal plate again so what I'm giving you are just some examples of um, how you need to apply the laws of electrostatics in your O-level physics exams. Okay, if you're interested to find out more scenarios or to learn this in detail, do check out our course on um, electricity and static electricity. I'll provide a link in the description below. All right, so in part so I've gone through part G, so let's go on to part H. So in part H, what you need to know is to describe examples where electrostatic charging may be a potential hazard. So uh, one of it is lightning, 
Okay, so lightning is basically a buildup of electrostatic charges and it is dangerous, right? Another example is uh, when we are pumping petrol or when we are pumping, pumping flammable liquids, right? These pipes will always need to be grounded or earthed, okay? So as to get rid of the uh, charges or the static charges that may build up, okay? Reason is because, right, um, these electrostatic, these charges, Okay, electricity is a source of ignition. Okay, and to burn something, you need an ignition source. So if you are pumping flammable liquids, that means liquids that can burn like oil, petrol, and so on, you need to make sure that right the static um that is being generated, the static charges that is being generated by these moving liquids right on the pipe are being grounded or getting gotten rid of somehow so that they don't build up charges okay which can cause which can be a significant ignition source to ignite the liquids or the flammable liquids okay part l you need to be able to describe the use of electrostatic charging in a photocopier and apply the use of electrostatic charging to new situations i do have an article in my blog where i talk about this in detail so let me show you Alright, I'll provide a link uh, in the description below to this uh, article so they can you can read the use of electrostatic charging in a photocopier in detail. Thank you for watching this video. Do subscribe to keep updated with our latest videos. And if you are interested, we do have an entire playlist on all the topics tested in physics um, O level where we share with you what is tested in detail. Okay, in addition, if you want to learn in detail, do check out our courses on Udemy. Bye and see you.